Have you ever wondered how you're going to get a hold of somebody on a cruise ship while you're on board to let them know where you are, where they are, or to ask them a question? You know, communicating with somebody on board a ship is a challenge that doesn't necessarily exist on land in the same way. So today, I wanted to share how to communicate with somebody on a cruise ship up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and I absolutely love going on cruises, but it can be a challenge to talk with people on board if you don't know where they are. You know, on land, it's really easy, right? You just pick up your phone, you call them, you text them. Probably nobody calls anymore. It's all about texting, right? You Snapchat them, whatever the case may be, but it's very easy to get a hold of somebody in this day and age. I remember plot episodes of old sitcoms where they couldn't get a hold of somebody and today you watch and be like, just pick up your phone. Oh wait, that doesn't exist back then, right? Cell phones. Anyway. So a lot of people want to know about the best way to go about staying in touch with those on board the same ship as them. Often the question goes something like this. I'm cruising with several groups of people. How do you recommend we stay connected on the ship? And Royal Caribbean cruise ships range in capacities from, you know, 2,000 to 6,000 passengers. So finding one person on board, especially if you're trying to like, oh, let me just sit here on the promenade and look for them is not always a simple task. So today I wanted to go over some common and useful ways to be able to stay in contact with somebody easily with each method coming with pros and cons. Starting off with the cheapest, simplest, tried and true method of them all, and that is just use a phone, right? Every stateroom on Royal Caribbean has a phone in there. And utilizing Royal Caribbean's in-room phones and phones in common areas is a simple way to communicate with guests on board your ship and onshore. If you're trying to reach somebody else on board the ship, like another guest, you can make a call to their stateroom and leave a message if they're not there on the voicemail. Use of the phones for calls to a guest stateroom is complimentary, so no additional cost. Of course, it requires the guest to be in the room to answer the call and or check the voicemail. I feel like it's actually harder to, get to check the voicemail than just to answer the phone if they're actually there. The result is you might end up in phone tag where it seems like you're always missing each other. And of course, I don't think you want to be sitting in the room just waiting for them to call you back. The best part of relying on the cruise ship's phones to reach each other is, well, it's totally free. If you want to get in touch with somebody on land, like you would want to call somebody back at home, you can do so, but there is an additional cost to that. Royal Caribbean offers shore-to-ship service via a 1-800 number. The cost of the service is $7.95 per minute, and you can charge it to a Visa or MasterCard credit card. So the phone system is easy to use on board, although it can be a challenge to actually get a hold of somebody. And calling back at home is, well, in my opinion, ridiculously expensive. So let's go to the next option, which is to use your cell phone. Almost everybody, I think, uses a cell phone and has one on them, right? And your cell phone will function on a cruise, although the cost of doing so will vary greatly. You could use your phone like normal, like you do at home, and place calls and text messages by connecting to the cell provider on the Royal Caribbean ship. But this comes with a hefty roaming cost. Usually, calls if you're roaming on Royal Caribbean's provider will cost anywhere between 6 and $8 a minute, depending on your carrier and your roaming charges. Using your cell phone's data plan can also be even worse because these are prohibitively expensive with costs of a dollar per megabyte or more. So in short, you're better off skipping this option completely and looking at our next option. But I should mention that there is ship cell service, but it's not a cell provider like AT&T or Verizon. It is the ship's own tower. And because you're on their tower, you're roaming, you're off your network. If you look up your carrier's coverage plans, the cost of that can be really expensive because you're going to incur a charge from your provider and from Royal Caribbean. There's lots of stories, if you Google around, of people coming home to hundreds and thousand dollar phone bills because they either didn't realize or didn't know how expensive it would be. So whether or not your carrier includes roaming or not, almost always it does not include cruise ships. Don't get them. And if your cell phone provider has a ship plan, I know AT&T has these plans. They're just equally expensive and they're very limited on what they provide you. It's not worth it. Don't do this option. I'm just telling you it exists, but don't do it. I would save it for like extreme emergencies kind of situation. So let's go to the one of the best options. And that is the ship internet. In my opinion, the best option for most people is to purchase a Royal Caribbean Voom internet package. There are two types of Voom plans offered, Surf and Surf and Stream. Surf offers basic web browsing with no streaming services allowed, and it starts at $17.99 per day for one device. And yes, you can log out of one device, log into another device. It's not per person, it's per device, and you can share it. So if you wanted to log in on your iPad for a couple hours, and then you wanted to let your spouse use their phone, you could log out of device number one, let them log into their device, no problem at all. The price gets cheaper as you add more devices, 
and there can be a discount as well if you pre-purchase it before the cruise. The Surf and Stream package allows full internet access, including streaming services, and they start at $22.99 per day for one device. And as I mentioned, there's discounts before the cruise. The price gets cheaper if you add more devices to it. And also for both plans, there can also be a Crown and Anchor Society discount once on board if you purchase it. Now, both the Surf and Surf and Stream are for the duration of your cruise. You're buying a package deal for the duration of your cruise. Royal Caribbean does offer 24-hour single-day passes that you only purchase on board, and those are $25.99 for Surf and $32.99 for Surf and Stream. By the way, these prices can all change because I'm recording this here in 2022. You know, consult the Cruise Compass for all this. So just want to give you ballpark ideas of what to expect. Once connected to the internet, you can leverage any number of messaging apps to communicate with someone else on board or even at home. There's a lot of great and free apps available out there like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Skype, and GroupMe. Of course, for this option to work, everybody needs to have a Voom package so that you can all be in contact with each other. If you have an internet package nobody else does, well, that's great, but you're going to send a lot of messages that are not going to get answered, right? Buying everyone an internet package is still cheaper than those roaming charges I talked about that you would incur with your self-carrier, and more likely, there's a common and free app you can all agree to use. So if you all agree on an app to use and you purchase an internet package, it's a reasonable cost for using the internet on board. Now, there's another option where if you have the internet package, you can also take advantage of still making phone calls, and that is through Wi-Fi calling. If you get the internet package, most cell phone carriers these days provide a means of making phone calls via an internet connection instead of relying on a cell phone connection. You can actually test this out at home right now. Wi-Fi calling has no additional cost. In fact, I'm not aware of any carrier that charges for it, although I guess theoretically it is possible, but it works just like at home and supports voice calls and text messaging. It works on most newer devices, including iPhones, Androids, and even BlackBerry devices. Does anybody still have a BlackBerry? StarTech? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, check with your carrier for exact specifications of what's supported. But Wi-Fi calling is supported by Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Google Fi, and even Cricket. To make a phone call over Wi-Fi, put your device into airplane mode and connect to the Voom via the Wi-Fi. If you set it all up correctly on your phone, then your calls and texts will be routed through Voom. And again, you can actually try this out at home right now. Put your phone in airplane mode, connect your home Wi-Fi, then go into your settings in your phone, turn on Wi-Fi calling, and call somebody or text somebody, it will still work because it's using the internet to place these calls and not the cell tower. And the same is true when you're on board the ship. Now, there's one other option you really should know about, and that's the Royal Caribbean app. So Royal Caribbean's app has a text feature that offers one-to-one -one guest chat along with group chats. So instead of bucking an internet package, you could just get the chat feature via Royal Caribbean's app. Basically, you get on board the ship, connect to the Royal Caribbean Wi-Fi, and then open up the Royal Caribbean app, and there'll be an option in the top right corner. You'll see a little chat bubble. Click on that, and then you can purchase the chat feature. There is a cost to using the chat of $1.99 per person per day, and everybody that wants to use the chat feature has to buy it. The good news is the chat feature is cheaper than it is to purchase a full internet package, but a Voom internet package will allow you to do anything else on the internet, not just chatting. So it kind of depends what you're looking to do, but this might be a good option for kids who you don't want to get an internet package for, but you still want to stay in contact with them, well, then the chat feature will work there. The chat feature generally works pretty well. You know, it's not quite as full-fledged as maybe some other features that are out there in terms of, you know, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, but it works reasonably well. And again, if you have your phone with you all the time, which most people do, I feel like that can be a good option as well. I also need to mention another option that some people bring on board, and I don't recommend this at all. This has nothing to do with cost. This has to do with your fellow guests, and that's walkie-talkies. So a lot of people want to know, can I bring a walkie-talkie on board the ship and use those? And the answer is, yes, you can, but I don't recommend them. Number one, first and foremost, they are super annoying to everybody else on board the ship, right? Nobody wants to hear, uh, Mom, where are you at? What was that? Where are you at, Mom? It's just annoying. So number one, I, they're super annoying. Number two, and I, equally importantly, they don't work as well as you might think. There's a lot of metal on board these ships, and there's a lot of interference from Royal Caribbean systems. The result is communication and the ability for you to actually get a hold of somebody may be very difficult. So I don't recommend walkie-talkies for those two reasons. And lastly, there's a bit of a hack slash workaround that exists, but I don't recommend anybody plan on it. And that is if you have an iPhone, your iMessage will probably work without an internet package. What do I mean? Well, you get on a Royal Caribbean ship, you put your phone in airplane mode, you connect to the Wi-Fi, and you say, no, I don't want to get an internet package, I just want to use the app. At that point, the blue messages in your iPhone will still work. There's a bit, It's a bit of a workaround, a bit of a hack, because for whatever reason, Royal Caribbean's internet doesn't block them. 
And so the messages will still come through. If there's any like attachments, like a photo, those won't work, but straight up messaging will work for free. Now, the reason why I didn't say, hey, this is your best option is it's a workaround. It's a hack. It's not an intentional feature for Royal Caribbean. So at any point, it could go away. You shouldn't know that it is available and it has been working for all the cruises I've been on since the restart of cruises in 2021, even before COVID, that was still a thing. But I just don't want to tell anybody, oh yeah, plan on this. And they get on board and it doesn't work. So something to keep in mind that it might work. Don't be surprised if it does. And hey, if it does, maybe save some money for your kids. But I would go with probably the internet package or the chat feature as your primary option. And I do want to give a shout out to something else that people do occasionally on cruise ships. It still works. And that's whiteboards. People will go to like the dollar store and pick up these dry erase whiteboards and put on their stateroom door, get a magnet so that you can attach it there. And they'll leave messages for each other. Like, Hey, going to the solarium, you know, I'll be back at four o'clock, something like that. That is a very low tech way. And it works for some people. It's really helpful. Also, if you have rooms near each other. So like if your cabin is next door or across the hall from somebody else, they can, they're going to be walking by there anyway, and they can see that. Of course, you can still end up with phone tag, or in this case, I guess whiteboard tag, where you're just constantly leaving messages for each other and not finding each other. But if it's not like critical, if you're just there with somebody you happen to know in passing, and you're not like, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time together, but you just want to know where each other is up to, the dry erase board has been a tried and true method for a lot of families that are out there. So something else to consider. Well, I hope this video helps some people out in terms of what to do with communicating. If you want my advice, my pick, I always go with the Voom internet option. In my opinion, it's the best option because it works the best, it's effective, and you can also use it for other things other than just chat, like using the actual internet itself for a variety of other features. For that reason, I prefer it. It's not the least expensive. It's not the most expensive option. It's right there in the middle, and it works pretty darn well. Let me know in the comments below, what's your preferred method to stay in communication with somebody else on board your cruise ship or at home? I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts on which option you choose and why. Also, while you're down there, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That's a little bell icon next to the subscribe button to let you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.